Hi and welcome. I'm the Reverend Dr. Cheryl Gaver, Presbyterian Minister in Eastern Ontario and the Questioning Pastor. This week's question is about the virgin birth. Do we have to believe it? And if we don't believe in the virgin birth, does that mean we're not a real Christian? Well, the answer is, as many times, it's both yes and no. We should believe in it. But if we don't, it doesn't mean that we're not Christian. Okay, so if we take sort of a look at it, we have what are called creeds. These are statements of faith, uh, statements of belief, everything that sums up what Christians are supposed to believe. And in both the Nicene Creed and the Apostles' Creed, they talk about the virgin birth. So it's recognized as being one of the foundational statements that Christians should believe. It's also true, however, that in the very original Nicene Creed, it basically said that Jesus was incarnate and became man. It didn't say by the Virgin Mary. That seems to have been added a bit later. So does that give you a bit of wiggle room? room? Maybe. But our standard of faith it isn't the creeds. The creeds are a summation of what we believe. Where our, our faith is rooted is in the Bible. What does the Bible say? And you might say, well, the Bible's very clear. It talks about the virgin birth. Well, not quite. Both Matthew and Luke talk about the virgin birth, but Mark and John don't though they do talk about something being unusual. And Matthew and Luke talk about the virgin birth, and they're both sort of building it on Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, that says, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Except that's not what Isaiah 7, verse 14 says. In the Hebrew, it says, a young maiden shall conceive. The, and the word is Alma. So, and the virgin is actually a different word. Furthermore, Isaiah is not making a prophecy about the Messiah. He's not predicting about something that's going to happen a few hundred years later. He's talking about something that's happening within his lifetime. He's talking to the king. And he says, a young maiden is going to give birth. And before the child's old enough, your enemies will be defeated. So it's within a very specific timeline, Isaiah's timeline, King Ahaz's timeline, and that's the end of it, okay? It was a statement that came true back in Isaiah's lifetime. It's not predicting the virgin birth. So that's why so many Christians do question the virgin, the idea of the virgin birth. The proof text, the Bible, doesn't quite stand up to scrutiny. And that's what gives us the, the latitude to say, do you believe in it or not? Okay, so that's sort of giving you where the problem is. But it is true that if God told Isaiah, uh, tell King Ahaz this, a young woman shall conceive, blah, blah, blah. God can use that statement that Isaiah made to King Ahaz. He could, God could use that to point to Jesus. So while the original prophecy definitely did not point to Jesus, God, of course, can work it so it does. Okay. There's other evidence that there's something unusual about Jesus's birth. I mentioned Matthew and Luke they are very clear there's a virgin birth. But what about Mark and John? Well, neither of them talk about a virgin birth. But there was something very interesting. There is an incident, and we see it in Mark, Matthew, and Luke. And they deal with it, they phrase it differently. Mark says, there's a reference to Jesus being the son of Mary. That's Mark chapter 6, verse 3. And you're going, the son of Mary? 
wouldn't you identify, it's a patriarchal system, wouldn't you identify Jesus by his father, not his mother? Why are they singling out Mary? What's going on? Okay. And obviously that seemed to cause a bit of problem in the early church because Matthew changes. He tells basically the same story, but he changes that wording. Isn't this the carpenter's son? That's Matthew 13, verse 55. Luke changes it. Isn't this Joseph's son? Luke 4, 22. So you've got that sense that there was something unusual about Mary and Jesus's birth. Now in John chapter eight, we'll see this, this sort of debate going on um, with the, the priests or the Pharisees in the temple. And um, Jesus is, is trying to teach them something. And they say they're descended from Abraham. And Jesus makes a snarky reply that, you know, even the stones can be descendants of God wants. And at which point they reply, we're not illegitimate children. So it's as though there was a very early tradition that Jesus's birth was the result of something unusual, something different. It didn't happen in a normal marriage relationship. And the situations surrounding his birth were not necessarily ordinary either. And that's important if you're trying to figure out what's going on. But the bottom line for many Christians, including myself, is it doesn't really matter. God is free to do whatever God wants. And if he wants a virgin to get pregnant and have a baby, she's going to get pregnant and have a baby. I mean, we're talking about God who created the universe, planets, animals, human beings, if he can create the universe, if he can create stars, he can create a woman getting pregnant on her own. Okay? God can do it. But what if you don't believe in the virgin birth and you can't? Does that mean you're not a good Christian? No, it doesn't mean it at all. What is the gospel that we preach? And that's why, you know, I had a question on what do we mean by the gospel? And this is why it's so important. What is the good news that we preach? The good news is not that Jesus was born of a virgin or that Mary was a virgin. We are not worshiping Mary. The good news is the story of Jesus dying for us and coming back to life, being resurrected. That's the gospel not the virgin birth. So there you have it. Some of the whole de the debate around virgin birth, why people believe it, why people don't believe it, and doesn't mean you're a good Christian or a bad Christian. No, it is part of our story, of, uh, of our Christian story narrative, but it is not the gospel. The gospel is not how Jesus came into the world but the fact that Jesus died for us and came back from the dead and ascended to heaven and sent his spirit among us. God's kingdom breaking into the world, God's for forgiveness for us. This is the gospel, not the fact that he was born of, of a virgin or not a virgin, okay? That's just part of being human. But God being who God is, why wouldn't you believe it? So thank you for joining me today. And once again, I'm the Reverend Dr. Cheryl Gaver and wishing you, well, very all the best and Merry Christmas. Take care and stay safe. Bye-bye.